Good evening, everybody. OI Karma here, and welcome to the very first ever Philosophical Friday. Um, I have taken all of your feedback, all thousands and thousands of comments and, and YouTube personal messages and emails and letters and all sorts of... Oh my, so much feedback. I'm just, I'm drowning in that, everyone. Um, <laughs> sense the sarcasm? No. So, yeah, okay. Um, Philosophical Friday, number one here for you. I'm going to be calling it that. Um, if you don't like the name, tell me. Uh, because no one's told me that they don't like it. No one's told me that they like it either. So, I'm gonna roll with it, because I figure, why not? Um, yes, it's an alliteration. I know there are plenty of those out there, but, uh, who cares? So, um, that's what I'm gonna be doing. Uh, I'm gonna be doing this every Friday, hopefully, if you guys like it. If you don't like it, I'm gonna be doing it for a few Fridays, and then find out you don't like it, and then stop doing it. Um, so, yeah, this gameplay that you're watching right here is the Midnight Club Los Angeles on the PlayStation 3. I'm playing with, uh, this is actually supposed to be a viewer video, uh, remember that, that, that idea that I had, <laughs> that idea that kind of relied on feedback that I didn't get, I'm joking, I, I make it sound like you're my enemy, but I love you guys, you're my favorite, you're all, you're all my favorite. Um, the gameplay is sort of just for something for your eyes to look at, because hopefully you get pretty confused this video, that's my goal, my goal is to make you, your eyes go all crossed, and, 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 and just your brain hurt a lot. Um, but yeah, this is viewer video number two, if it were to be a viewer video, with, uh, Senor Jordan is his name. He is a senor. He's Spanish. No, he's not Spanish. Um, he's, uh, Italiano. He's, he's, he's Italian. He's Italian. But anyways, yeah, that's the race we did. He actually was talking on the mic, and I was talking on the mic as well. It was going to be a proper viewer video. But, uh, I checked afterwards, and his volume was playing loudly, so I could hear his car noises and all that, and it was just not enjoyable at all. But, um, yeah, I can still use the gameplay, obviously. I completely wreck him. I dominate him, obviously. That's just, you know, that's just who I am. It's what I do. Um, but I don't think you'll be watching the gameplay too much anyways after I start getting into it. So, what can I talk about, sort of? Um, what I decided to talk about for my very first Philosophical Friday, which is right now, is something that uh, it comes easy to me. It's something that I've sort of... I I've had plenty of conversations with people about it before. Um, I've had this conversation before with people if you're watching the video, I actually might have had some sort of a variation of this convo with you in the past, because it's something that I find very, very interesting. So what it sort of revolves around is epistemology. If you don't know what that is, um, essentially a basic version, a basic definition, sorry, of epistemology would be that epistemology is kind of a philosophical, <clears throat> uh, I don't know, idealism, a way of thinking, where you doubt everything. And I mean everything. <laughs> um, it, it, and I'm going to go into more detail about that, so let's begin. Um, doubting everything, I guess you could say the big guy for that was Rene Descartes. Um, some of you may know him, actually, they do teach him, you know, they teach you about him a little bit in high school. I have heard a tiny, um, I have heard, I have learned a tiny bit about him in my school, but where I mainly learned about him is outside resources, you know, Discovery Channel, uh, online, of course, and a couple of books. I actually haven't got my hands on any books he has written. But uh, I would like to. That'd be pretty cool. But Rene Descartes was what you can call a skeptic. And a skeptic, the, you know, uh, I guess dumbed-down definition today, is that a skeptic is someone who just is wary, is, I don't know, cautious about getting into new things. So a skeptic would be like, you tell them, I don't know, you did a triple backflip. They're going to be skeptical. They're not going to believe you. That is sort of the definition today. Uh, the more formal definition of a skeptic is someone who doubts, and who doubts everything. So a skeptic would be someone who is just doubtful of literally everything, and that is what Rene Descartes did. Uh, Mr. Descartes woke up one day, and he said, I'm going to doubt everything. All right, because I got nothing better to do in my 1800s life. Uh, I'm going to go out there and, and just start doubting things. Actually, he probably wasn't alive in the 1800s. I think he was older than that. But anyways, um, yeah, so he woke up. He's like, I'm just going to doubt everything. Like, I, I don't even care. Like, that, nope, doesn't exist. This, nah, I don't believe it. So he went around doing that. And what happened to him was he started making some discoveries. Now, whenever you're a scientist doing an experiment of any kind, you try to go in with an open mind. Um, now, you do make a hypothesis, of course. You guess or, I guess, predict as to what is going to happen in the experiment. But it's always, at the end of the day, an open mind. You just go off of the facts, right? And you don't change the facts to suit your hypothesis. You'll change your hypothesis to suit the facts, obviously. So, what Rene Descartes did was he went in, he just started doubting things, generally. 
So, yeah, he went in, he just started doubting everything, and um, what he basically, how I can put this, is he just literally doubted anything. So you can start with simple things, such as the sun's going to rise in the morning. He would doubt that. You would say that the grass is green. He would doubt that. And you could say something like, I don't know, 2 plus 2 equals 4. He doubted that as well. And he got away with it, because, let me put it to you this way, I'm going to give you a version of how he can doubt those sorts of things. Um, here's how. Knowing that the sun's going to rise in the morning, you know, is probability, right? And he looked at probability, because the sun rising in the morning is probability, guys, because you don't know what's going to happen for sure. We think we do, but, you know, let's say an asteroid or something crashes into the horizon, completely destroys it, there's no more horizon anymore, guess what? The sun can't rise if there's no horizon. So the sun's not going to rise in the morning if a giant asteroid hit that we would have no warning about. So you don't know. You don't know without a doubt, that's the important part, you don't know without a doubt that the sun's going to rise tomorrow morning. Um, and something that is, that is revolved around probability. He would take dice, for example, and throw them. He doesn't know that he's going to land on 7 or 4 or 8. He has no idea until they finally do roll and stop moving, and then he knows. But even then, he doubted that, but I'm not going to go into that right now. <laughs> Instead, I'm just going to keep going on the uh, basic roll. So he said, yeah, you don't know that the sun's going to rise in the morning. That's pretty basic. That's doubtful. You can doubt that. Now, how about the, the grass being green? Well, number one, saying grass is green is completely false. Um, that's not true at all. Grass looks green. Uh, it can also be brown. If it's dead grass, it can be white, it can be black, it can be yellow. You know, there are different kinds of grasses. So if you get more specific and you look at your front lawn, it looks like the color green. You can say, oh, there's my phone. Hopefully you didn't hear that. <laughs> um, no, I brought it to your attention now. <laughs> Even if you didn't hear it, you heard it. So anyways, he looked at, let's say, your front lawn, and you know it's green, right? It's the color green. It's the green on the lights on the road on, in this game. Same color, right? You can look at it and say that grass is green. Well, actually, even that is wrong, too, because to you, it looks green. To someone who is colorblind, or to someone who doesn't see colors as well, it might be a dull gray, or they might get have color confusion where it might look like a purple, or something like that. So you don't actually know that the grass is green. Now, <laughs> this might seem kind of weird um, to think about, but actually it's pretty basic, because you can say it's green to me, but it's not green to everybody else. My green might not be the same as your green, too, right? My green, you know, I might say that grass is a dark green, whereas to you it looks like a medium or a lighter green. Okay, so let's take something such as 2 plus 2 equals 4. Well, he doubted that. Does 2 plus 2 equals 4? Maybe. Maybe it does. But here's the thing, you can't prove it, because you can say that 2 plus 2 equals 4, what does that mean? Well, 2 is, and, and, and plus, and equals, and 4, they're all sounds, and they're all things written on paper to represent something else. So 2 represents a thing and a thing. 4 represents a thing and a thing and a thing and a thing. And plus means combining, and equals means, you know, what you call the thing after combining the other things. Here's the thing, when they invented language, when they, when the people who first invented the number system and language system and that, they wrote it down. Um, after, of course, oral communication. They would write it all down. And then they assigned them symbols. So two things, right? A thing and a thing would be a symbol. That symbol eventually evolved and changed through languages and cultures. And now it has, um, for us, for me anyway, it is a two. It looks like a two. Um, the thing is, that symbol could have had any, any, any uh, signature to it, right? It doesn't necessarily have to be a thing and a thing. It could have meant a thing, a thing, and another thing, which I call three instead. So actually saying 2 plus 2 equals 4 is not necessarily true, because throughout history it could have had any chance at all to equal anything else in the world. 2 plus 2 on a different planet, or maybe in a different universe, or in a different dimension. 2 plus 2 may equal 7. 2 plus 2 may equal cat. 2 plus 2 may equal triangle, just as easily. So telling me that 2 plus 2 equals 4... Uh, I'm sorry, telling me that 2 plus 2 equals 4 is not necessarily true. You can't prove it to me. You can't prove it to anyone because maybe 2 plus 2 only equals 4 on planet Earth, right? So, I, that's kind of a, a tricky concept to grasp. It kind of seems like a write-off, but if you think about it, in a way, think of it this way. Um, if someone tells you, let's say, I don't know, uh, my sister, she tells me her name is Brianna, okay, well, I can look at that and say, I don't know that for sure, because maybe, maybe, she is a uh, creation of my own imagination, right? Maybe everything around me in the world is actually just uh, not even real. It might not even exist at all. And, you know, it could be just... That's actually a proper theory. It's a theory called um, brains in vats. It's that we're all the brains in jars, and we just are running a computer simulation. Like, none of this is real. Everything is sensory information. When you touch a desk, 
it feels like you're touching the desk, but you're really not. It's just your brain creating that feeling. You don't even have hands. You're just a brain, right? So everything could be a creation. So her telling me that her name is Brianna could be a complete lie. She doesn't even have a name. She's just a construction of my imagination. She's a simulation. She's a uh, program, sorry, in a computer simulation. So what he did was he kept going with this, doubting things, checking them off. Yeah, I can doubt that. I can doubt that. That's not true. You can't prove that. Awesome. Sweet. Great. But then he... Um, wanted to get more basic. He said, I can just keep doubting all of these easy things. What happens if I try and doubt something really, really fundamental, something very uh, foundational in life? So he sat down in a room, and he closed his eyes, and he imagined having no body. So he imagined having no body, and you gotta keep this in mind, he's a very smart guy. And people like Albert Einstein and Rene Descartes, they did these thought experiments quite often where they're really smart guys, and they think really hard, they can get stuff done. So what he did was he sat down, and he imagined having no body at all. And he could do it. He could float around the world. He, he went to China. He floated into space and landed on the moon, right? Because he had no body. He could do that. And it might be a little bit weird, but he was able to do it. He was able to imagine having no body. And he tricked his own mind into believing that he had no body. You know, he didn't feel himself in the chair. He didn't hear any sounds around him in the room. It was a, you know, very uh, strong form of meditation in a way. But he was able to do it. And then he sat down. And, you know, when he woke up from it or whatever, when he woke up from his thought experiment, and he said, okay, now I'm going to having no mind and that's where the problem arose he tried to imagine having no mind and he thought and he thought and he thought but no matter how hard he tried to think about it he couldn't do it he could not imagine having no mind because being able to imagine having no mind requires a mind in the first place to imagine it <laughs> so he couldn't do it no matter how hard he thought about it he would just he's unable to imagine not having a mind and from there we get his famous phrase his famous his famous quote called, I think, therefore, I am. And people might think that that means, I think, therefore, I exist. And that's almost right. That's not exactly correct, though. Um, actually, it depends on who you ask. But for me, that's, that's, that's almost right. That's not 100% correct. When you say, I think, therefore, I am, he's not saying, I think, therefore, I exist, specifically. He's answering his own question. Because when he first started out his quest to find out if he could doubt everything in the world, he sat down and he said, he asked himself, can I doubt everything? You know, am I able to doubt everything? Um, and when he eventually did his thought experiments and ended with the fact that he could not imagine having no mind, he could not doubt that he doesn't have a mind, he could not doubt the fact that, yeah, you know, I have a mind. He said, I think, therefore, I am. And, <laughs> I mean, I, I guess that almost means I think, therefore, I exist. But in a way, it, it doesn't at all. He's answering his own question. You know, am I real? Am I am? Right? <laughs> it, it's, it's tough. It, it's not existing because it, it, to say that to say that um, you know, going back to the thing about my sister saying her name is Brianna. You know, I don't know that she exists, but she still is because she has to be. Because if she isn't is, is not, then she can't be. But she is because I see her being. <laughs> And it's twisted, and it and it's cool, and it's crazy. But he he took that and he said, "I think, therefore, I am," which means, yeah, I can I can think. I have the ability to think, which means I am without a doubt here. I am without a doubt. If someone asks him, if someone went up to him and said, "Hey, are you?" he would say, "Yes, I am." So there you go. <laughs> he's a very smart guy. He was a very smart guy, and he's uh, made us learn a lot. And I've learned a lot from him. Hopefully, you guys learned something from this video. Hopefully, your head hurts. Hopefully, you are confused, and um, hopefully, you liked it generally. So yeah, thank you all for watching. If you want to see more, click the subscribe button. I don't need to tell you that though. You already know how that works. But if you want what, if you like the video, feel free to click the like button. If you dislike the video, press the dislike button and leave comments or leave personal YouTube messages or write me a letter or send a falcon with a note of papyrus to me, and I will read it in, an, in, a, in, a, in a daunting English voice. I will read it and read, oh, well, oh, I come, I loved your video. It was rather daunting, and my brain is on fire. It hurts so much. Thank you, good sir. And I will be happy about it. So thank you very much. Um, and that is it. My name is Olai Karma. Stay classy. Praying for some pictures of you